The plant pictured here, behind the anthurium, is a species of aloe, commonly known as aloe. I would guess that when many of you, myself included, hear the name aloe, you th what you think of is aloe vera, pictured here. But this genus is incredibly large, with a lot of interesting diversity in leaf morphology and some really beautiful flowers. This diversity can make many aloes a little tricky to identify, especially because they hybridize very easily with other species in the genus and even other genera. Some aloes can also look a lot like some agaves or some haworthias, which adds another layer of complexity in their identification. The form can vary. Some species may be shrubs or small trees with rosettes on the ends of the branches, like aloe barbarae, which happens to be the largest aloe species in the genus. However, most aloes grown at home or in the landscape are generally pretty small. As a side note, do you recognize the plant in front of that tree aloe? It appears to be an agave, probably agave perii. Despite the differences in form, most of the aloes you will commonly see have fleshy, green, sometimes greenish blue, lanceolate leaves with serrated margins. Many of them will be maculated with white dots in the leaves, and the leaves will be in a basal rosette, especially those sold as houseplants. The leaves will generally be curved upwards, although some may be recurved. Take a good look at the serrated margins of Aloe Aristata on the left. These margins are the key ID feature that will help you tell the difference between this species and some species of Haworthia on the right that we'll look at later in the unit. Some aloes may also look a lot like agave, but aloe teeth will generally be softer to the touch. Another difference between aloe and agave leaves is that aloe leaves will break off easily and have gel on the inside, whereas agave leaves are very tough and fibrous. Aloe leaves are commonly a little fleshier and more rounded than agave leaves as well. Agaves will usually be larger at maturity than most of the aloes commonly grown in the garden or in containers. Some aloes may even have teeth along the back of the leaves. The leaves of some aloes may almost be arranged uh, in a flattened alternate arrangement rather than a rosette. You can see that here really well on aloe plicatilis, or the fan aloe, which is one of the larger branching types. You'll remember the term plicate from the begonia lecture, which means folded like a fan, which is where this species gets its specific epithet. Some species of aloe have fantastic wavy or curly leaves like the torch aloe, aloe arborescens. And there are a number of different cultivars and hybrids available, such as this beautiful hybrid aloe delta lights that features dense maculation over dark green leaves. In bright sunlight or grow lights, aloe delta lights may take on a really attractive pinkish hue that adds to the ornamental quality. And I'd be remiss if I didn't show you aloe polyphylla, or the spiral aloe. Aloes are polycarpic and can flower multiple times. The inflorescence is a raceme with tubular flowers in the carotenoid pigments. Now I'll show you some examples of what the inflorescences look like on different species.
Do we see anyone familiar to the right of the aloe in this photo? Aloe is like a coarse, well-draining potting mix and full sun to very bright indirect light. During the growing season, from early spring to early fall, water when the surface of the soil is dry. In the dormant period in the fall and winter, reduce watering so that the soil is just barely moist and the leaves don't shrivel. Aloe vera is toxic to pets, as listed by the ASPCA. And this concludes our discussion of the genus aloe, commonly known as aloe.